Most Kick-Ass Grandma in D&D History We started playing a 3.5e D&D with a Fallout module called Exodus, and it was going pretty well. We took the living world approach where players can roam and affect areas based on their choices in quests and travels. We were about six or so months in when my grandmother first asked about it further, when I told her of the sessions of my first group. I told her it was a violent 50s post-apocalyptic game full of mean people, blood and monsters. Normally she hates all these things. She's one of those overly religious grandmas that tends to not watch anything that drops f-bombs or shows lots of blood. But since she loves history, murder documentaries, 50s and survival shows, she immediately got excited and wanted to play. I wrote her up a sheet and helped her make a character. She described her character as an elderly antiques dealer that's from Pennsylvania and was chasing a time-traveling ship named the Eldridge that went missing in the 40s. She saw a show on the real-life version and thought it would be cool to go after it in a story. She played an elderly woman that went by many names and constantly changed clothes, so it was hard to track her down. We started off calling her Grandma, but she later named her Pistol Packin' Grandma, or PPG for short, based on the song Pistol Packin' Mama. She started off with about 20 caps and an M1 Garand, since she did well with describing her antiques dealer story. Wearing a long brown duster and hat, Grandma started her adventure at the Mojave, since that's where the quest began. She got a job through a caravan after showing she had high medical skills and would be valuable as a nurse. She would be riding on the caravan to New Reno. The adventure went pretty normal until she came across three guys beating up a ghoul. I began reading out the scene and how interaction works when the first thing she did was blow out the knee of one guy. He toppled to the ground. She aims at his other knee and makes her demands. Get your friend and get out or I'll blow out his other knee. The level one enemies took their lead pipe and charged her. She shot a second time, blowing out his other knee. She then points at the stunned enemies. Drop them and run. I mean it. Next shot is going to his liver. She rolls to intimidate them with advantage and passes with flying colors. They drop their stuff and hightailed from the area. She helped the ghoul and bandaged him up. She was rewarded with lumpy fruit and went on her way to get a long rest. The next in-game day, the caravan rides for a few hours until hitting a checkpoint. It was a small military base run by the rangers. As the lead merchant Hank focused on payment and paperwork, she decided to haggle for an extremely beat up jeep, one so bad it would easily go into a death wobble at 15 miles per hour. She's given the deal plus full tank of gas and didn't try to do rolls to find out if he was lying or not. Unbeknownst to her, I plan to show her how mean the wasteland can be with this side quest reward. Her job was to exterminate a mole rat nest from the museum half of the base. She was given a key and told good luck. So to prepare, she had an idea and began to gather trash to create something I didn't expect. A trash bag based ghillie suit. Taking her place next to some garbage with a rifle and a wrench she found, she began her wait for mole rats. Once she saw where they were coming from, she decided to kill the three already traveling outside the nest. The first was taken out with a bullet. She missed the second and third shot. Grandma got bit twice. She shot and killed the second and immediately went for bludgeoning the last one by surprise. Getting up from her kills, she scavenged the meat and caved in the entrance to the nest and told the soldier she completed the quest. He then gave her the jeep, except there was a problem. A superior talked to him and would only allow half a tank of gas. She attempts diplomacy but fails. The superior introduces himself as Dante and tells her he filled it up so she could be on her way. Unknown to her, he broke the gauge to always stay full. She proceeded to take it and begin her travels, delighted with her far more impressive reward than what the caravan gave. A few hours later, the jeep putters do a halt and she realizes what happened. Me, you realize your jeep is out of gas, and it's about a two days walk to go back. Grandma, I don't care, they screwed me and I'm going back. Me, when it's morning? Grandma, no, immediately. So through hellish conditions, raider encounters and low ammo, she comes across her caravan as it finally caught up. She uses her diplomacy to get their help with her situation. In return, they get the jeep. She succeeds with a generous trade and spends the next few hours going back. She arrives at the checkpoint doors and replies, You screwed me. The jeep didn't have a full tank. Now I want a second one with a full tank of gas after what you did. To set the scene for you, these were all level 6 rangers in full gear in a huge group of about 30. They're well armed with 4 snipers and 2 minigun soldiers. The rest had rifles and revolvers. Dante comes to the door and pretty much tells her the work was barely worth a jeep, let alone gas, and she should be thankful. They argue further and after a few failed diplomacy rolls, he got aggressive and says he'd shoot her if she doesn't leave. So she left and began carefully planning guerrilla warfare against the well-armed military base. She started by using her merchant connection to cut off trade to the base, aside from contaminated food and radiated water. 
She returned a few days later with her armed caravan and replied, All right, Dante, if you want healthy soldiers, you'll work with me. Now I want four jeeps and four full tanks of gas. He chuckles and orders the soldiers to fire warning shots at her. She immediately backs off and goes back to planning. Over the course of months, hours IRL, she then learned that trade wasn't good at all. The range faction ran settlements nearby, so she carefully began to fix all the problems of ranger ran settlements, carefully replacing the law with armed merchants and kicking out the faction. With good trade of food, water, weapons, medicine, and the death of minor raiders causing problems, one by one she toppled the ranger-controlled towns in quick succession. She then cut off the trade fully. She then returned to the base with her caravan fully armed with pipe rifles and jury-rigged guns. All right, Dante, now I want eight jeeps and eight fu- She's interrupted by the fire of five soldiers who took first. Dante shouts, Your caravan will die after those acts of terrorism against us, as two shots hit her immediately, knocking her health to bloodied quickly. A slaughter of a gunfight ensued. To the shock of the caravan, Dante's men mowed down their people with the superior weaponry and skill. Between frenzied Brahmin and fleeing merchants, Grandma grabbed an escaped Brahmin and immediately got away with the rest of the fleeing people. I expected her to give up right then and there, since it nearly killed her character and slaughtered the faction she had created. She calmed them down and gave a speech, citing the new towns they took, booming trade in their sheer numbers. She proclaimed it wasn't an act of power what the soldiers did, but an act of fear for what they accomplished. She promised them riches doubling all they've already got, and then some if they continue to follow her lead. Otherwise, they made an enemy with the rangers at this checkpoint for the rest of their lives. With a fantastic speech and a few great roles, they were on board one more time. But now we're fighting differently, she proclaimed. Over the course of a few days, they finally cut power to the base and waged her war, in quick succession, surrounding while throwing crafted Molotov cocktails at generators, buildings, tanks, and tents. The men were far too busy in a total panic to fight them and the fires, giving Grandma and the merchants more than enough time to retreat. Buying a scope for her rifle, Grandma focused on fitting the men for one final attack. Using the last of her crafting material, she made explosives and gave them to the men. Deciding on hiding herself on a nearby cliff, equipped with her trash bag ghillie suit, she stuck a large rusty pipe over the barrel of her rifle and got into position. Debuffed from contaminated food, water, lack of sleep, low morale and medical supplies, the soldiers were weak and low on health, and good rolls after all the bad stats were calculated. The merchants made their first move at attacking the entrance, shooting at guards at their posts in such high numbers that even with low damage, it was chipping away great amounts of damage each turn. With Molotovs to push the soldiers back and pipe bombs to blow the doors open, they breached the entrance and had the full attention of the rangers. They began to pull out the big guns. Except unknown to them, Grandma began dropping the snipers with the help of her new scope. One after another, she began aiming at their guns, legs and hands. With a stealth crit modifier, the ones who didn't die were too sick, crippled and damaged to get proper shots on the merchants. By the time they realized what was happening, it was too late. The base fell to the level 1 grandma and a bunch of pipe rifle toting merchant NPCs. From ammo to guns and gear, merchants began looting the place of everything it had left over. Two rangers were left alive in the base, Dante and his bodyguard. As the place was looted, grandma had the two men stripped of weapons and ammo. She then said, All right, Dante, now I'm taking all the vehicles and all the gas. Shocked and in complete dismay, he's tossed from his own base and given freedom to go to the next town without prosecution. Grandma explained she felt the best tactic for keeping enemies is fear. She wanted two alive to tell the tale of what happened at that base. Grandma left the base with all vehicles. From motorcycles, jeeps, to even water tankers, she had enough to make a hefty amount of money and repay the merchants. I was completely shocked at how I saw it all turn out. I've never had players go to this depth or level of petty determination and tactics. I expected her to go rogue and maybe steal from bad guys or murder hobo at the first realization of what raider factions were, but did not expect this. It took me an entire page front to back of notes and tally marks for me to calculate all the insane amounts of EXP she made. If I remember right, it leveled her up to 8, putting her one level above the group I was already playing with. Afterwards, Grandma then asked me to get her a glass of soda and said she'd like to play again, this time heading towards military bases on her way to Pennsylvania. I mentioned the other factions of Fallout lore and Enclave stuck specifically. She said they should have been purged the moment the Wasteland realized they existed. Her logic was that Vietnam was the moment she finally stopped trusting. They stopped being trustworthy after Agent Orange, she said. This story proves that tabletop in general can be for anyone, and everyone, regardless of age or experience. This is the most badass grandma in TTRPG history. Seriously, she's such a gangster. Blasting kneecaps, organizing an insurrection, and I bet she can also knit. Please try to get your parents and grandparents involved for epic stories like this. 
please let us know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.